What's up guys? This is going to be the first of a few videos that I'm going to make on poker strategy. These videos are going to go through the probabilities, tips, and tricks of playing poker at every stage of the game. And it will also look at how things change based on whether you have two players in your game or all the way up to eight players. Just a quick update from me. I'm really excited to make this video. This is the first video that my face is appearing in on this channel. And also, this is the first video that I'm filming with my new camera. I just picked up the Sony a6500 and I'm really excited to test it out. If you want to know how it's kind of going with me in this camera, uh, just leave a comment below and I'll get back to you on that. And then one last thing before we get started, um, there's going to be a lot of numbers tossed out in this video. If you are wondering where these numbers come from and you want to know the math behind these numbers, I'll post a follow-up link either here or here. I'm not sure which side it appears on. I'm new to this YouTube thing, uh, which will go through how I calculated the probabilities that I'm using in this video. All right, let's get started. All right, let's begin this video with some pre-flop probabilities. And then I'll show you how to use those probabilities to better inform your betting strategy. We'll begin with just one opponent, but I'll quickly increase that number and see how the probabilities change. All right, let's get started. All right, so let's say that I, I got in my hand pre-flop a queen eight. So when I'm playing Texas Hold'em against just one person, one of the first things that I ask myself is, what is, the pro what is the chance that I have a higher card than he does? So what is the chance my high card is higher than his highest card? So in this case, another way to kind of phrase that would be, what is the probability the opponent has a king or an ace? So one of these two cards is a king or an ace. Because this does make a big difference in the outcome of a one-on-one -on -one Texas Hold'em game. So if you do this out mathematically, you find that when you're just playing one opponent and you have a queen as your high card, the probability that he has something higher than you, so a king or an ace, is approximately 30%. So roughly one in every three hands that you have a queen, he will have a king or an ace. All right, let's see how that number changes when we add in more opponents. So now that we have two opponents, we'll say, the chance that one of these four cards is a king or an ace is a little over 50%. So to be exact, it's about 51% of the time, one of these four cards will be a king or an ace. So that is with three total people in the game, you're playing against two other people. If we increase that number even farther, and we say that we're now playing against three opponents, that number shoots up to 67% of the time, one of these six cards will be a king or an ace. And so this queen will not be the highest card. So kind of, that tells us a bit. So, you know, that's saying that when we're in a four person game, two thirds of the time, someone's gonna have a king or an ace in their hand. And so maybe let's say we raised pre-flop. So if someone called us, you know, it's pretty likely, you know, in this four person game that someone in this game has a king or an ace. So two thirds of the time, you know, we try to like raise and, and eliminate a couple of these people. The person that calls, you know, it is a good, good amount of probability that you know, they do have that king or an ace, that higher card than you. So you kind of have to keep that in mind moving forward. Just in case you're curious, if we raise the number of opponents to four opponents, the probability that someone has a king or an ace shoots to 78%. With five opponents, it shoots to 86%. Six opponents, it shoots to 91%. And then with seven opponents, so there's a total of eight people in this game, including ourselves, that number is about 94% of the time, one of those people in the game will have a king or an ace. So, you know, that's helpful to know these numbers and have a rough idea of, you know, the types of hands you're playing and your chances to win, you know, based on what the flop ends up being. So if you know you have a king or an ace on the flop and you know you have a little bit of an intuition of these numbers, it, it does help a lot. All right, so let's kind of move forward and then kind of just run through these probabilities again with now a king as our highest card. So right now our hand is king eight, and I'm wondering what is the probability that the opponent has an ace, that the opponent has this higher card? So when we had the queen as a high card, it was about a 30% chance that the opponent had a higher card than us. In this case, when we have a king as our high card, the probability that the opponent has an ace 
is roughly 15% of the time. So, you know, between one and two times out of every 10 draws, the opponent will have an ace in his hand when we have a king as a high card. So, and then, no, and then the number for, you know, what is the chance that the opponent has a king, you know, that you have to kind of factor in too. But I'm kind of just looking at strictly what is the chance that the opponent has a higher card than us. So the chance with this king eight of the, the opponent having a ace is 15%. If we add in the second opponent, when we're playing two opponents, the probability that our king is not the highest card is roughly 30%. So it's about a 30% chance. So one in every three times, one of these four cards will be an ace. If we now bring in that fourth opponent, or that third opponent, four total people, that probability is about 41% of the time they're going to have an ace. So, you know, keep this in mind, you know. So when you're playing in a game of four people, you know, you have a little over half, you know, a little over one in two times this king will d indeed either be the highest card or be tied for the highest card on the board. So, you know, that will help our betting strategies. All right, now, just in case you're curious, when we have four opponents, this number shoots to 51% of the time, one of those cards will be an ace. Five opponents, 60% of the time, uh, one of those cards will be an ace. Six opponents, you have about 68% of the time, one of those cards will be an ace. And then with seven opponents, so again, with eight total people in the game, we have about a 74% chance that our king will not indeed be the highest card and someone will have an ace. So finally, we'll look at, so let's imagine we cycled, this, these cards are all thrown out, like we don't know what they are, so this is just a random draw. But we're looking at, we have an ace in our hand as the high card. And now I'm just kind of curious, you know, what is the probability that the opponent has either, you know, the opponent also has an ace, so we don't have the sole high card advantage. So when we're playing just one person, that probability is about 11% of the time. So we can be pretty certain that the opponent will probably not have an ace when we have an ace. When we increase that to two opponents, we get you know about 22% of the time one of those other people will have an ace. And this is kind of an interesting trend for you know the opponent also having an ace. So when we go to three opponents, we get to about 33% of the time someone else will have an ace. So it's kind of like, you can kind of, it kind of seems like the pattern is, uh, and this doesn't hold true completely as we go up in opponent numbers, but for the first four or five, I would say, you could even go you know, to five opponents, so a six person game. The intuition you can have when you have an ace in your hand is that the probability someone else also has an ace is about 11% times the number of opponents you have. So when there was only one opponent, we had they had about you know 11% of a chance to get an ace also. When there is now three opponents, it's about a 33% chance. And you know with five opponents, it's about a 50% chance, so a little bit under that 55%. But it's kind of a nice way, intuitively, you can kind of think about, oh, what are the odds that someone else has uh, an ace? And so I would say also it's important to note, you know, the probabilities only mean so much. You have to learn as you play the game, as you play full hand, how often certain opponents uh, bluff probably. So like maybe they just always raise a lot. You kind of have to take that into account and kind of figure out what their bets mean to help you kind of more solidify these probability numbers and that will help but you know just having an intuition I think always helps my poker game you know knowing that when I have an ace and I'm only playing one person I can be really pretty confident that he doesn't have an ace so it's just kind of cool knowing these things before I uh, end this video a couple other pre-flop things you might be wondering about 
uh, would include, for example, a flush. So the flush will definitely improve your odds of winning, but it's going to improve it only very, very slightly. So we're going to kind of cover a lot of the flush probabilities in a future video that I'm going to make that's not just pre-flop. Um, the same goes for cards that are consecutive. So also, once again, when you have two consecutive cards, going to boost your probability of winning a hand but only you know, pretty slightly when you don't have any more information about what the flop is. Then finally, same thing for pocket pairs. You know, pocket pairs, it's definitely, it gives you a slight advantage, especially in a one-on-one uh, -on -one game when you have an opponent that, that say that these are not paired cards right here. You're gonna have a slight advantage, uh, even if he has ace-king, you're gonna have the slight advantage of winning the hand, but you really get the information you need and you can really make the betting uh, strategies once you have a little bit more information. So once you know the flop and maybe it flops three cards that are all under these nines, you kind of have a better idea of, oh, I'm probably in a very good position right now. So we'll cover those types of things more in the future videos of this series. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you learned something from it or at least enjoyed the probabilities popping up onto the screen. We dealt with a lot of high card stuff today, but I think the next video in this series is gonna be very, very useful. Um, in that video, we're gonna be going over what happens on the flop. So imagine that this was our flop, and we had a pair with this card right here. We're gonna be looking at stuff such as, what is the probability an opponent had a higher pair than us on the flop? So uh, make sure to subscribe to this channel to not miss something like that. Uh, and then if you've learned anything from any of my videos or you know, this video in particular, it, it would mean a lot if you just throw this video a like and also a subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Uh, it's nice seeing the numbers kind of grow on the different videos that I'm making. It kind of keeps me motivated to make more videos and uh, just you know produce quality content in the future. All right, thanks again, guys, for watching. Uh, hope to see you in the next video.